What's up, Tube Tube? Welcome back to Logoidos Chop Shop, the second best gel blaster channel on the Tube Tubes. And today I have for you the STD SLR. And we're going to take a look at it and tear it down and do what we do usually. So, let's see what's in the box. Black foam. Awesome. All right. We've got a. Looks like a couple of 18650s. It'll be a 7.4 volt battery. Mag blaster. Looks like it's mostly nylon. I'm just going to get rid of this box and just look so we can look at the blaster itself. Alright, that's better. Uh, this little optic here doesn't come with it, by the way. It just happens to be fitted to this one. It's a little red dot. It's pretty cool looking. Gives it a nice look. Let's take a look at this. So it looks like it's got a nylon stock, nylon buffer tube, nylon upper and lower receiver, nylon handguard. Uh, it looks like an alloy barrel. Uh, appears to have a nylon gearbox in there as well. And the alloy cylinder. This one's obviously, um, no prizes for guessing where this one's come from <laughs> by that uh, quality control sticker on the bottom there. Um, I'm going to take it apart. Let's have a look. All right, so um, I'm going to, before I take this apart, I'm going to do a chrono of the stock blaster. Um, so I'm going to cut to that chrono now because I don't have it on me right now. So I'm going to have to uh, go to probably to hardcore blasters and do some chronoing. So I'll cut to that footage now. Right, so I'm back at Hardcore Blasters with the uh, STD SLR. I'm just chronoing it in its stock form. 209. Time out. 237. 237 237 alright I think that's pretty good I think that's fairly consistent uh, mid to high 230s um, that's pretty decent for out of the box not too bad alright and now I'll get to tearing it down um, let's see is this one of those ones where we pull this to get the buffer tube out um, it's usually, oh, alright, it's like that. There we go. Alright, so to get the buffer tube off entirely, you have to pull these pins down just a little bit further. So, it'll go so far to the end and then it'll stop and you just got to pull them down a bit further. Uh, alright, and... Start by taking this little optic off. And so I'll take the I haven't really looked at the mag. I should probably look at the mag before we before we go too much further here. It is a pretty nice solid looking mag. Looks like it is nylon. Uh, this particular mag, as you can see, has got some windows in the side of it and you can see there are some gels in this mag. So I'm not gonna open it up, but I think, I just wanna see, does this bottom plate come off? Some of them do, yes it does. All right, so you can actually take this down for um, cleaning. I'm not gonna do that because it's full of gels, so. But um, that's that's a nice feature, and oh, it's got one of those doors that I'm not super fond of. But I didn't have too much trouble opening it with my broken fingernail, so uh, it's not too bad. But if you're wearing gloves, forget about that. 
Alright, I will continue with this handguard. Looks like there's two Allen screws holding that on there. Keeping in mind I've never seen this particular um, blaster before, so I'm just assuming. Yep, that's how that goes. And there is a little piece here that just dropped out, which it looks like it's a um, like it's a uh, like a little plug. Not sure what that's for, but that's cute. Maybe I'll work that out later. Someone can write in the comments and tell me what that bit's about. I'm not sure. It is a nice looking handguard though. It's um pretty solid nylon. It does have a barrel stabilizer in the end of it, which is always handy. I like that. Um, this, however, is aluminium. This whole outer barrel and inner barrel is aluminium. And that barrel nut also looks like it's aluminium. And it's on there nice and tight, so I'm going to have to get a tool to open that. But um, that's nice. That is, that is a cool bit of gear. I like that. It's knurled as well, if uh, anyone's into that sort of thing. If you like a good knurl. Um, oh, I'm just going to have to get a spanner to get this off. Right back. Alright, I just had to get a spanner onto the end of this to loosen it off. But now that it's loose, I can take it off. And that is an alloy barrel nut and it is quite nice like the the quality of it is quite nice and I like oh that's good that knurled outer barrel is you can tell there's a spring in there to push the barrel back uh, against the front of the gearbox so that uh, it gets a nice seal in that nozzle um, as soon as I release that uh, that barrel nut the, the outer pushes forward and there's, there's the spring there. That's good. I like that. Um, a few few companies have had that in their blasters stock. But um, most of the time that's something I usually chuck in after the fact. Um, a lot of blasters don't come with them for some reason. So that's cool. I like that. Alright. Um, take the pins. Take down pins out. This is a really nice feeling blaster, like just the way it, the way it feels and the, I just like the, the material so far, it feels like it's, it's good to touch, I don't know, that sounds weird, <laughs> but it is, it is nice, I like it. There is a lot of nice stuff coming out on the market this year. now and I will also remove the buffer tube while I'm here with my almost long enough screwdriver I think it's just long enough to get in there Um, buffer tube is nylon, that's pretty nice, would be nicer if it was aluminium but you know, can't have everything, but still pretty nice. Um, now the upper, I know with these 
particular blasters there is a mag charging switch in here on top of the gearbox that charging handle's got a real nice pull to it as well like it's got a real nice pull length a lot of the earlier ones only sort of had a short length I don't know that one just feels feels nice but, um, you just got to be careful when you're taking this upper off not to tear off the switch that um, does the mag charging um, which is another cool feature that I like because mag priming is something that um, it's such an easy thing to implement I don't know why more blasters don't have it standard because it's uh, it's handy not just for priming your mags but also for troubleshooting um, mags or emptying gels out of mags and uh, just I, th I think it's a great feature to have I don't know why it's not standard on every blaster uh, incidentally another thing that I just found um, well pulling this apart was the little rubber o-ring dampener which goes in between the barrel and the outer I didn't notice it when I pulled it off because it was still in the outer um, it gives it a really nice tight fit between the outer and the inner barrel so you don't get vibration uh, and you get a nice tight fit between the inner and the outer that's cool I like that it's a good thing to have um, I didn't even it when I pulled that barrel out uh, it was still in the inside of the outer barrel so I didn't notice that it was there but I just saw it just then I thought I better mention that cool feature it's something that I usually try to do anyway in a lot of my barrels when I build them I will put some sort of rubber or even just like wrap a bit of electrical tape or something just at like you know point one of a millimeter just a little rubbery bit just so that it doesn't uh, loosely vibrate around or rattle around inside the outer barrel um, I like everything to be as tight as possible because that's where your accuracy comes in as well like you're never going to get accuracy if your barrels flopping around so that's a cool thing I like that let's get the rest of this open all right where was I, I was trying to get the top of this sorry uh, distracted by the o-ring all right so um, to get this off you have to push you have to sort of release the charging handle a little bit push the upper forward and then you've got to lift it up if you try to do it like you would any other blaster and just pull this thing straight forward you will tear the switch off the top of the gearbox which is your mag priming switch incidentally a cool feature that I found it's not a momentary switch it is a two position switch uh, so when you start pulling the charging handle back you'll get to a certain point where you'll throw that switch and that will prime the mag for such time until the charging handle returns forward and then closes the switch or opens it again as the case may be um, that's an interesting little feature I've never seen it done like that it's usually uh, this is either has a spring behind it to push it forward again or it's a momentary switch but um, cool cool little feature you see the wires going down the side of the gearbox there all right let's have a look at this t-piece uh, it's an interesting t-piece it's somewhat similar to a v2 but also somewhat similar to a j9 t-piece um, somewhere in between the two of them does have one of those weird rubber o-rings that's supposed to catch the um, the gel balls stop them from falling out they sometimes work but it's a nice thought I like it um, it, it does make clearing your chamber a little bit more difficult afterwards because it, if it does work and it catches the gels it does what it's supposed to do it can can uh, 
retain them in there. Uh, the barrel is aluminium and it looks pretty nice and smooth. I am going to get a vernier and measure that so we'll find out what the inner diameter of it is. Looks like, I don't know if you can see that, 7.4. The, the length of the barrel is 29 centimeters. If that information is interesting to you, some people want to know these sorts of things. Just gonna get this mag release out now. Looks like it could be a number one Phillips. Which I have yeah. Yep. Go on number one. Looks like pretty standard type of mag release. Also looks like it's in a pretty standard position as per most of the standard M4 type uh, mags these days. In fact, let me just grab a J9 mag and see if that works. Yeah, it looks like a J9 mag would, would work in there, so... That pretty much lines up with uh, the standard that most gel glasses are using these days. Let's just see. Get this TP stand in there. Yeah, perfectly lines up with that J9 mag. So that's cool. It's good to know because if your mates are using J9s on the field, you can borrow their mag if you run out. It's always handy. Alright, next we are going to void the warranty. Oh man, they make these stickers hard to get off, don't they? I'm just going to break it. Alright, that's interesting. Ah, oh, it's one of those. Yep, okay, cool. Oh, it's got like a little, it's like if you're ever familiar with the wells, the original wells, they had this tiny little Allen grub screw and then this weird uh, one millimeter thick, like four millimeter diameter circle that would sit in there to push the motor up and everyone would lose that circle and then they'd be wondering why their pinion gears are stripping because they were always one millimeter too short. Uh, it's kind of sad that they've used that same system because it really sucks. Uh, you could probably replace that motor plate with something else if that really bothers you though. Easy enough to do. Ooh, whoa, that's shiny. It's got a gold motor in it. Um, Looks like it's got nylon pinion gears, which means it's probably got nylon inside it. Which is something you sort of come to expect from a stock blaster, but let's continue on. I will remove these four screws from in the grip here, and I will save you the nauseam. Alright, so... I've got the screws out of the pistol grip. Remove that. Oh, here's something interesting. Can you see this little line here? Going across there. Um, so obviously it's a V2 style gearbox. But I think if I pull these screws out, 
these two screws here, then this would possibly come off, allowing you to probably screw on like a V3 or a Gen 8 style motor to the bottom of it. Motor cage. There you go, look at that. Um, For reasons you might want to do that, I don't know, but that's kind of cool. I can think of a few. But yeah, and also for what it's worth, those little bits that came off are actually aluminium. So that's also cool. It means that when you're screwing your pistol grip on, which is where you hold the blaster and you know most of your force is transferred between your arm and the weight of everything hanging off of it into the gearbox, that's actually aluminium. A lot of them are just nylon and um, I don't know about the longevity of, of of when you're screwing your grip into nylon and then you're like you've got basically the whole weight of your blaster hanging off these four little screws. Uh, I like that, that's, that they've made that out of aluminium. That's cool. It's also a cool little feature that you could uh, whack a cage on it for a Gen 8 if you wanted to do that for reasons. That's cool. I like that. Let's get down to business. What's next? Taking this gearbox out. All right. Let's see. All right. Um, I am going to have to punch the pin out. It holds that gearbox in. There we go. All right, I got that pin out. Um, there it is there. Now that should be the last piece that's holding the gearbox in. Yes, it is. It's quite loose now. And I uh, should be able to pop this right out of the receiver. Like that. That was actually pretty easy. I'm used to uh, Gen 9s, which put up a bit of a fight when you're trying to pull them out of the receiver. Um, these look like all the little screws are nut inserted, which is nice. Jinji Wang Fu. Looks like it's got a nylon nozzle. Alloy cylinder. Let's pull this thing apart. Let's see what's inside. It is fitted with, looks like 8mm bearings, which I'm not super fond of. Um, I prefer I prefer bushes to bearings, um, just because when they fail, they're not catastrophic failure as opposed to bearings, which when they fail, it is catastrophic. Whereas bushes generally tend to um, just wear slowly. They eventually do wear out, but like usually your gears will survive by the time you've worked out the bushings. I've worn. This is interesting. The safety catch here is, um, it's been filed a little bit, uh, I guess to make it fit in the uh, receiver a bit better. It's always cool when they have afterthoughts like that in the factory. All right. Uh, I am going to be putting an o-ring into this. I have a brown o-ring, one of Alfred's brown o-rings. So uh, that's going to be going in here. Uh, other than that, I think it's going to be pretty much remaining stock, but just having an o-ring in it. Um, first of all, I will get the spring out. It's always First thing you should do when you're pulling apart a gearbox, the amount of times that I've actually got halfway down and then realised I haven't pulled the spring out. Happens more often than you would think. Um, okay. Uh, right, it looks like it takes a really big fat Phillips head. Maybe fatter than the one that I have.
All right, got the biggest screwdriver. There we go. I don't have the Guido scale on me today, but um, it does look like it comes with a 1.1 millimeter. 1.1 or 1.2? Yeah, so it's about a 1.15 it looks like or something in the middle there. Either way, that doesn't really mean much. Um, other than the thickness of the wire. Alright, let's take a look inside this box. Because we're going to do an o-ring on it. And also have a look at what it's like inside. That's what we're here for. This is where the magic happens. Let's see what happens when we have to take this screw out. I'm not sure. I'm gonna take it out anyway because I'm not sure. There is a screw here that holds the um the mag priming switch in, and yes, it is indeed also holding the box together. I wasn't sure if it was going to be part of it or not. It certainly is. Alright. So, here we are. Now, the first thing I've noticed, if I haven't got my head in front of the shot, is that having all the wires and everything makes this very difficult to split apart because the two halves of the box are very... I'm going to zoom in. Hold on. There we go. So the two halves of the box are kind of joined at the hip here because of these wires. Um, it is a nylon gear set, uh, not too dissimilar to the J9, but it does have, uh, incidentally, it's got more ratchet stops on the bevel gear. Um, So that's important to anyone. All right. Let's have a look at this O-ring seal because that is what I'm going to change. I want to have a look if it's actually any good to start with. Whether it's in need of a change or whether I'm just changing it for change's sake. Alright, just going to pop this cylinder out, tap it plate and all, and give it the old finger test. Oh, not too shabby, not too shabby. It was enough to, to blow the cylinder head out of the, out of the, um, cylinder. That's always a good sign. When there's enough compression to do that. It's one of those designs that I kind of wish they put a uh, flange or something on here to hold that in, but it doesn't really need one. It's not like an issue with strength, but um, makes it very hard to check this. But that does seem to have good, fairly good compression for a stock O-ring. Either way, we've got the brown one going in. Let's uh, let's whack that one in now. All right, so I've got the brown O-ring here going in, and I will also get some oil here. I'm just gonna use my finger to lube it up a bit. Yeah, that's a nice seal. Oh, I'm not on camera. Sorry. All right, it's a nice seal, uh, arguably marginally better than the original one. The original one had, had a decent seal, like it was decent, but um, you know, we're here, so it's one of the things that I generally always do when I'm in the gearbox, 
is just whack an o-ring in why not because you're there you might as well because you're gonna have to sooner or later and if you're in there do it all right so i got that o-ring in there now everything looks good in here got the standard nylon gears but that's all right i think and a lot of people like to rush out and get metal it's not always necessary like I mean certainly anything metal will be stronger than these nylon gears but uh, I have had good results from just nylon uh, without without any uh, metal gears so I mean if you're just running an air seal and standardish spring I mean you'd be doing all right with this it's not it's it's out of the box it's pretty it's pretty nice like in terms of uh, the price point you're looking for this I think uh, STD have, have, have hit a pretty good spot here STD incidentally uh, one of my favorite manufacturers from the bad old days when uh, gel blasters weren't really that much of a thing but STD used to do some good stuff back with the five and six um, when they did it before Jinming were a uh, were a thing I mean they were around Jinming been around forever but uh, but uh, I always thought Gearbox aside, the STD-6 um, was a superior blaster. Just didn't have that punch. The Gen 8 had that aftermarket support. And I think that uh, STD have made a solid return to the market here with this blaster. Being that it is entry level sort of price point. Um, but seems to have the higher level performance of some of the more expensive blasters. Yeah, sure, it doesn't have all the metal bits that some of the new stuff has, but, uh, you know, metal isn't everything. So, I mean, there you have it. Um, the STD SLR. I think this is a good little hitter. This is for the price point and for what you're getting. Um, I, think, I think it's a good starting blaster, you know? It's a good starting point. It's got a nice feel to it. It's made from a nice nylon. Um, I, I could, my only fault that I could find was sometimes the uh, semi-auto switch was a little bit finicky when you put it into semi. If it didn't quite click into semi, you'd have to switch it into full auto, do a few rounds, and then switch it back into semi. And, I mean, that's kind of typical of most mechanical uh, V2-style gearboxes. Uh, and by V2-style, I'm also including... J9 type in there as well, but yeah, so uh, I, I think this is a good thing like good price point good solid little blaster And if you're just getting into it, this is definitely a good place to start. All right Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and all that good sort of stuff uh, Also, if you're interested in a patch, uh, I'm gonna put links down in the description to where you can hit me up for a patch uh, Come down to Hardcore Blasters here as well in Ipswich. Uh, it's a good field, enjoyable time for everyone. I love it here. I keep coming back. Peace.